Yo, what is going on guys? Godrakton here today, bringing you a new commentary video. In this game, we are playing against the Shen. At first, I thought it was Camille, or Vladimir, or Mundo, but it turns out that it's Shen. And I don't think I have a Shen commentary, or at least I don't remember having one, so I thought, you know, why not record it? So, I'm on my, my, uh, my account that I've been recording on recently, which is currently Diamond 4. Probably trying to get towards Master Tier, to be quite honest with you. Also, I think I'm going to mute my team because already when I started the game, my team was um, threatening to into each other. So pretty, pretty classic um, gaming, of course, pretty classic gaming. And now my my mid lane AFK it as per tradition as I'm recording these videos. But yeah, guys, before I get into this uh, video today and like the matchup, I just want to say real quickly that just like a big thank you for everybody that's been supporting the videos lately like you guys are absolutely killing it and if you don't um already sub or you don't already like the videos that's fine but i just want to appreciate you guys for for doing that the ones that do like it really means a lot to me i'm enjoying doing youtube again like i'm actually having a really great time with this so just want to say thank you to you guys all supporting me and um all wanting more content so here i am and i'm trying to you know make as much content as i can before i go for a couple weeks so yeah guys anyways Shen, so I would like Conquer in this matchup, but because I didn't know who I was against here, I thought it was like Shen support. Like, I really didn't know based on their team comp. Um, I pressed the attack, so yeah, we're going to play our playstyle a little bit differently. Press the attack is not the worst rune I could go, but Conquer is better because your AD that you're getting from Conqueror on top of D-Blade gives you a lot of um, stat checking power. Shen is very oppressive level 1 too, so I'm going to take W here. So I'm take Q. I like to take W myself. Let's see if he has um, bone playing. Probably does. Oops, missed the minion already. My first game tonight, so I'm a little bit tired as I'm making this. Okay, no bone playing. What is this? Like, I don't get it. So, there's a funny little thing going on right now in a lot of these videos. It's that you guys just don't understand why certain people are playing the way that they are level 1. And I agree with you. Like, what is this? Why is Shen taking E level 1 into Renekton? Like, can someone help me understand that? <laughs> it's like, I play against Jax players that don't take E level 1, or they just don't even abuse it. I play against, I don't know. Like, you name it. Whatever champ is supposed to abuse me level 1, it just won't. Like, it's so peculiar. But anyways, Mundo's top lane, so I've got to try and shove here. Okay, I got my level 2. Got my potion here. Check out these minions real quickly. I would dive, but I'm a little bit of a um, pussy at this point, you know? So I'm not going to. I mean, he's kind of low. Eh, it's a bait. I could have cheery recalled right now, by the way. I mean, I could still cheery recall, maybe. I'm really delaying my time here. I think it's because like I'm not fully adjusted to the game yet, but it's okay. So what I'm doing right now is I'm cheery calling for a longsword. Actually, I can even get potions. I think I'll just do that quickly. Okay, I'm so late, but it's okay. Now, with the timing that I've done this, like, it is really late. I should instantly push third wave and recall, but I decided to ward because I didn't know if I wanted to stay. But it would be better just to recall. So I get longsword, come to lane. Shen is really slow at pushing. So as I come back, I have a lot more raw power to fight him with. This is why... Doing this into matchups where they can't really outpush you is really big. Also, with Ignite too, it's a big factor in um, lane control too. Okay. Thing is, I took way too long here, so wasn't the best thing to do already. Burn a TP at least. Okay. Shen's got to look to E me here, I think. By the way, I will be going um, 3.0 into W Max this game. If you're wondering. Hmm. If he stays, I can probably kill him, but the problem is, is he's gonna look at the recall now. Hmm. Yeah, he's dying to recall. Honestly, I think I'll just shove. So I'll burn TP, and I can also get like a recall maybe if I want to. 
Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that right now. Actually, he's already TP. He's gonna pull wave. If I was just to recall that, he pulls wave into this bush and then he freezes the wave on me. That's the problem with um this, obviously. I can stay longer for pickaxe. It's no problem. I will be going Eclipse. Actually, Blair Rune King is really good too. Maybe Blair Rune King, actually. Camille's not on the map right now. I could be getting ganked. I think, actually, right now I'm getting ganked. Well, at least it wasn't Camille, but I think she was running here. Hmm, I'm in a really bad spot. I'm in a really bad spot here. Yeah, Camille died bot lane. That's fine. I didn't die for this, so it's actually really big. See, to draw pressure. So right now, I know Mundo still could be top lane. I'm close to 6, so I could at least go 1-4-1 one one here. Okay, I'm one minion off. Yeah, as long as I pressure top lane, I'm pretty much fine. Okay, nice. So he didn't have W there, so I go for my combo. And because he like blew all his things out early, I was able to get the level 6 and turn the fight. And he has no TP, by the way, so this is like insanely huge. I get tower playing, I can recall now, he misses wave. It's really ideal for me. Shen isn't 6 yet. Now, the thing that people need to realize in this matchup is Shen is like Quinn, right? So every time that he has 6, or like his ultimate, if we know it's up, we need to instantly ping that on the map. Because as soon as we don't, our team's going to forget. So it is like a little mind game thing, right? So every minute you can ping this if you want to. So let me have some coffee. I've started taking coffee as I'm doing these uh, late night commentary videos. I think it's been helping out, <laughs> especially for my energy. But yeah, so in about, as well about the matchup, the way you win this necessarily is at level 6, you just stat check him. Like he can't really do a lot to you. He has to disengage. Now you don't W straight away because there's a lot of variables. Either he gets shield and blocks your W damage. He uses his W, which also eats up your W damage. Like, we have to play off a lot of mind games here, like little mini games. Something I can do as well is freeze. Also, I'm going to ping right now. That is six. I don't want to shove the wave too much. I want to keep it on my side and just freeze on him. It's like my wave just, like, getting another winning condition in my lane. You already W'd. Some Shen players will just panic W like that. And now that he doesn't have it, I can just like go for something here. As soon as he has no W, I'll turn. Not going to queue the wave because again, I'm trying to let the wave push. Sorry, my setup is like really awkward right now. Not sure why. I'm just like <laughs> getting pathed into all these minions. It's so strange. If he walks closer, I will kill him. Yeah, I'm going to pull the wave here. I'm going to ping that he's missing right now. If Shen does start walking there, I probably need to move that too. But right now, it seems okay. Damn, these minions are really putting up a fight against me. He W'd again. He's really predictable. Whoops. What the heck? <laughs> no one saw that. It's okay, though. I think he dies. I think we get him. Yeah, we got him. Okay, so I all in there because he was on cooldown and um, he's W2. Like, as long as you're, like, level 6, you will just win the fight because your additional health and magic damage you're getting from your ult is just going to eat um, Shen up alive and you can't really do anything about it. So, again, I don't need to play it so perfect. I just need to play it in a way where, like, I'm not giving him extra... Oh, dear. Well, this was silly, Emmy, to be quite honest with you. Didn't think Mundo was just that. But, um, I guess it's all good. I got greedy. I wanted to just kill the wave and then just reset. But, yeah, bit, uh, bit greedy there. Also, I seem to be building the wrong item here. Um, I could just go Eclipse, but honestly, it's not worth it. Now, I'm going to tell you why, right? This is not worth it because... Once I get, like, Eclipse is great and all that, but I found that Blair Rune King is just superior. Like, it really is. Especially if, like, all the champions being played right now. Like, you need that one-shot damage. Like, PTA is very flexible with, like, 
um, all play style, so I can go bruiser or full AD. Same with Bork, right? I can pivot into bruiser items, or I can pivot into full damage, right? The thing with Eclipse, though, is you can't just pivot into full AD, because it's a bit too weak by itself, in a way. Also, oh, I don't have my... Uh, I messed up here a little bit. I don't have my triple tonic potion, because I haven't got space in my inventory. But yeah, essentially, I just think it's better, especially for the all-in as well, and going W max. It's, like, infinitely better. This is, like, why we prefer it at the moment. At least I do. I've been winning so many games of Bork over Eclipse. I think the Eclipse nerfs are too telling as well. Again, it's not that it's a terrible item or anything like that. Like, Eclipse is still great, but for me, I just like Bork a lot more at the moment for damage. I can build into range lanes, I can build into melee, like, I can do it into anything, to be quite honest with you. I'm gonna sit on the wave here. If he walks up to W again, which he's going to, by the way, I'm pretty sure he'll do it. He'll do it now. Walk him down. Okay, it's all good. I get the flash. Again, it's not bad because having no flash is huge, so he can't E flash, obviously. And if he has TP, he has to burn it now because I'm pushing up. Or he stays on the tower and then go for kill. Okay, he TP'd. So that's another resource off the map. He has to TP top and he can't make it to the fight bot side. Not that he would go there, but it's it's just like, it's like programming that mindset of like what it's actually doing, right? So just because I get a TP there, like it would open up for more opportunities in other games, obviously. So it's like really good, of course. But yeah, to talk about a little bit of all things in the matchup. So... Some Shen players will run up into the middle lane and have Q level 1 as well. So, the thing that Shen's Q does exactly is if you're getting hit by it, like the Lion, he will get extra attack speed, I believe, and also on-hit damage. So, you always want to play around it too, like his Q. That is a big factor in this matchup. We haven't really been seeing that a lot in this uh, matchup. I think it's because, like, it's not the best Shen player, to be quite honest with you. But, um, it is something to look out for. So, if I walk here now and I get hit by that, I get slowed and also I take more damage. Also, it's a good hint as well to know if he's in the lane. If you see his blade, that just means he's still top lane. Gonna hit this. We have groups coming up. I wanna try and get the plate here. He's still missing. Wait, he's bot lane right now. Oh, if they get out, this is big. He has no flash, though. He has no flash. Again, he could have flashed, though, if I didn't all in earlier. And he, okay, that's that's amazing. That that couldn't have gone better, to be honest with you. Also, my Masti's in trouble. Need to go help him. Trying to run here. Okay, he gets one. I'm here. Okay, kill that. Just on him off here. He is so lucky. Oh, he's really lucky. Also, I think my ult just took the cannon. <laughs> he's gonna go for play. I'm gonna walk down here. So I don't really like doing this, but because I'm already so fed, I think I'm just gonna go for the dragon because I have the tempo advantage on the map. Everyone reset. Kill Vladimir. So I'm gonna go help Yi here. Like, Renekton's job is all about being a initiator, essentially. Or just like... um, How do I say it? He's more of an enabler, right? So, he wants to enable... I need to back still. But I understand. Sorry, I'm going to explain myself in a second. I just need to buy items. Better go Eclipse now. But yeah, Renekton likes to enable players on the map. So, when you're fed, you want to go around, take objectives of your team, try and set up flanks, try to use, you know, Fog of War to make plays, or, like, flank attempts where you go behind. Like, there's a lot of things you can do as Renekton, right, to... um assert yourself in the game but a lot of people don't really view it that way like renekton gameplay so they just think it's all oh win lane then whatever happens happens but no you can you can have an impact it's just all about the mindset too like right now i'm gonna just go over here gonna drop a ward on this put a back mid lane just get just get information just so we can see where mundo or any supports are camille can always run by the way so it's also very important Okay, get that. Pretty predictable from Vladimir. They usually use that W when you Ian. 
I was trying to talk about something else too. I feel there's a lot to talk about with this matchup and like game, but I think because it's late and maybe I'm just jumping from topic to topic, it's harder to say. <laughs> I think he was over here though. Like um, when he used summoners and stuff. I was just basically saying like, it's not all about killing your opponent that matters. It's just about like what your actions are doing for the game. Like sometimes getting summoners is better than just a straight up kill, you know? And it's true, you know? Shen couldn't flash E bot lane. My bot lane lived. We ended up winning fight top lane. He had no TP either to get back from his misplay. Like, there was a lot of amazing things with that like to happen. Also, Vlad's here. Gonna come over. I only want to E when I'm hitting somebody here. Okay, oh, just, I'm just gonna miss it, you know? Also, I might have been um, a little bit baited here. It's better to ult the. It's better to ignite Vlad there because he heals more in the process. You could say, "What about Mundo ult?" But to be honest with you, I think you care more about the Vladimir because he's the target you want to one shot before he does a ton of damage. Just gonna walk out here. Yeah, we're really are so in our lead at the moment. Also, <laughs> look at our team. Like, what is this? We have four Blade of Ruin Kings. And by the way, Blade of Ruin King is kind of getting buff next patch. So, I'm very happy about that, like, to, um, what is it, 10%? Yeah, 10%. They are nerfing some of the stats, but to be quite honest with you, I think it's more of a range nerf than it is a melee nerf. Like, for Renekton, Renekton doesn't care about that extra damage. Like, having that 1% extra is a lot bigger for PTA, Last Stand, just the fact that you synergize more with the percentage damage. Like, it's a lot bigger of a deal. Okay, some little fight going on there. Got the Eclipse now. Gonna go Red Trinket and go bot lane as well. Okay, so my job at the moment is essentially just pressure, like, bot side, play around flanks, like, walk up to mid. Like, right now, if I was already bot, I could walk up. So we're gonna clean up there. Okay, good job, team. I wanted to tag these, but I think I'll leave it. Okay. Amazing. Yeah, so Shen is pretty useless. The thing about Shen as well, guys, is like, if you do play the lane correctly, and you do like, assert that lead and whatever you do, Shen doesn't really do a lot, to be quite honest with you. Like, all he is is an old bot. He can W time, like, your W, so you need to watch out for that. But aside from that, he's, he's practically just a minion. Like, Shen doesn't really do anything. He has to just protect his carries, but in this game, he doesn't really have a win condition. Most people are behind. Mundo's fed, but it's a Mundo into Vayne, Yi, Yon, Renekton with Bork. There's not a lot that can really be done on that part. I want to fight this. Okay, does he want to fight it? Because I want to fight it. Hmm. Try to life stuff this a little bit. Can he stop hitting me? <laughs> this dude just won't stop hitting me. Okay, I'm coming from behind. This is like what I was talking about the flanks with Renekton. Well, this game should be over, to be quite honest with you. I don't think there's a lot else that's going to happen. They're probably going to surrender here. Shen Rage Quit? Well, <laughs> that's our game against Shen, I guess, you know. Overall, I don't think it was the worst type of game against Shen. I think we played it well. But if there's anything else I can probably say in this matchup, it's just like, um... Probably take Conqueror. Conqueror is a lot better for the lane, for your damage, your potential. Against a lot of aggressive Shens as well, like Conqueror's going to be doing a lot more work than press the attackers as well. I think we're just going to end now. Pretty quick game overall. Yeah, they're all mid. Just gonna push for tower. I could go there though. Maybe I'll try. WRE. Now I'm gonna ignite here. It's only important part to ignite though. He has W. Okay, this rendered. Well, GG. That is the Shen matchup, I guess. Another quick game, I guess. <laughs>
as per usual, guys, I think I'll do a little VOD review now just so we can go into the matchup. So I'm going to do it from my insights now that I've got it all configured and stuff like that. So let's let's go into the actual game here. So level one, um, the things you need to be looking out for is that you can already go to the lane and Shen, if he's a good player, is going to run up, probably get his blade down in the middle, most likely. They'll put the blade like just be, like in front of your tower. Now the way we play around that when we get to the lane, right, is... Let me just start also turn my music down. If it's, if the blade's here, we just want to plan the sides like away from it. Because if we're walking up and he pulls it, he's going to instantly try to fight us. And that's where W start is also really big. Like the reason I took W here is like... If, if he actually did it, by the way. Um, I would end up like gain my, my auto W. He'd be like trying to fight me. And I'd gain like the same health pool. And then by the, the next time that I also get my W, I'm practically killing him. Also, he gave me so much fury early. But again, it's because he didn't have Q star. I don't know why he took E. Like, guys, I cannot tell you, I cannot explain to you why my lane opponents are just doing the... <laughs> like, it just seems like nobody knows how to play against Renekton level 1. It, it's just really mind-boggling to me, like, all the players that I'm playing against doing these really weird strategies where they're not even hitting me or anything. I Like, I don't know how to teach you that, guys. Like, I know you're all here... Asking for my advice, like, God, Rectum, what do you do about this, that? Like, these scenarios that I want to show you, but it's just not happening. <laughs> like, I don't know what to do, guys. I really don't know what to do. Probably need to play in, like, a bit of a higher elo, but I think I'm getting myself comfortable into that. So, soon enough, you will see more VODs. Probably, like, from my stream VODs that you're going to see, because they're playing on my main account mainly. But yeah, anyways, to explain, like, some of this lane as well, though, guys. So, he took E here. If a Shen ever takes E, you just take W and you just end up winning. At this point, could W again every time he gets a shield, walk back out. If he had W, I would hold my W first. I would always auto attack. So if you're going to go into Shen, auto attack first, wait. If he has no W, you can then W. But if he has it, he will most likely always use it on your auto attack. So that's how you kind of figure it out and what also happens next in the lane as well. Yeah, here is a really pivotal moment. So the good thing about Renekton into a lot of these tank matchups, like Tom Kent, Shen, anything that, ha that like lacks wave clear, Renekton is really excellent in the fact that he can get the push and then he can recall. So as I take this, I can literally recall now. Now I, I go here in this wall and I start recalling. This means that when I back, I get my free longsword and I can buy a potion. Because I took it a little bit longer, I do get myself a refillable, but I do regret overstaying here because timing is everything. If you're wasting your time like with these like movements that I did early, it's just completely stupid. And this time could have already been spent coming back to lane. Like picture this, right? If I got my reset here, by the time like I'm already back at this stage, I'm already walking out of base with a longsword and potion. And Shen is stuck on this health and he can't do anything. And when we also factor that score crabs coming up where enemy jungle might go to contest it, I'm coming into the river fight with a long sword and potion, which makes it really broken into these champions. And typically with Renekton, you have two choices in this stage. You can A, recall for long sword and potion, or B, you can go into enemy jungle, get vision, or try to invade. Renekton's not the best invader, um, like alone, because of the fact that his cooldowns are too long. And I think it's a lot more viable when you're playing on red side because when you're red side, you push wave into this uh, tower here and then you can go into blue buff, which is easily accessible with like how the terrain is. So you can go there, ward over wall, get better viewpoints, and then you can also uh, blind like fight the uh, jungler or whoever's there who will most likely be chunked trying new camps. But yeah, so anyways, I still do get my Cheerio call. It does half work, but I'm also forced to like try and keep him in lane longer. If he wasn't more lazy with the way he played, it could have backfired on me. Because Shen could walk to lane with more items. And being that I have Ignite, it's very volatile too. And this is another thing too. If I'm playing Ignite versus TP, I need to Cheerio call ASAP. Because all this time wasted just means that Shen can just walk back to lane. I'm struggling to push out. And he's going to come back with a bigger item advantage, so... This is why timing matters. I got pretty lucky here to delay the recall. And you most likely will do, like, to a lot of players, even Masters players. But as you're getting higher up in Lilo, a lot more people are going to be safer. A lot more people are going to be more aware of what, like, your mistakes are too. So my mistake here was essentially just that too. Like, the delayed time of coming back and... And that basically almost cost me. 
Yeah, just to show the fights here, by the way, um, just to go back. So Shen, a lot of Shen players have this pattern where if you're Eing in, they will insta W like this, they'll QW, and then you just disengage. You don't fight that. Because if I fight right now, I'm tanking all this minion wave, and he's also just going to potentially block some abilities of mine too, like my W. So I'm going to wait. I'm holding my W. Gonna get, the last, get the last hit here. Gonna auto Q first. My Q is really strong in this matchup, especially with Conqueror. So I'm always gonna try to look for a Q, unless I'm playing off the wave. Yeah, right now I EQ again. I think his W is coming up. It does come up. So then I wait, wait for it to end. He E's and I W. I tried to freeze the lane. Shen is looking to recall. I am then looking to try to stop it. This benefits me a lot, just trying to stop it here. So I acknowledge that I need to push really fast. So I'm going to push. Go push as fast as I can. A little bit slow. Taking a bit of time here. Wanted to get the last hits, but sometimes not always the best. I have to walk on my wave now because Shen is trying to pull it. And because he's trying to pull it too, it creates a freeze. So when the lane's frozen, I can walk back, get ganked and die. So there's a big consequence there. Even now, I could potentially get ganked and die. So I had a really awkward lane state. And this was due to the fact that I've just me messing up my timers this is like the butterfly effect in motion basically what if i just recalled at the time i did i can be kill my laner i can stop him getting prio to push come to lane and have tp after like the, there's so many things that have happened just because of that alone and this is like what i also want to preach to you guys it's that even the smallest mistake can snowball into something bigger that you guys can't even imagine so in this case, it's like, this alone created Shen a positive condition where he avoided the fight when he needed to. He had, like, the game played on his terms instead of mine. My turn, it would have been on my turns if I got my item faster and then I came to lane. So it really matters a lot, obviously. But still, that doesn't mean I can't outplay and that I can't win. Renekton could always do that. And in this situation, I do pull it off here. So I'm just waiting. Shen goes for the E on me. Now, like I told you before as well. As long as I get the level 6, I completely stack check Shen. Shen EW'd first, so I couldn't return damage on him. I'm 1 minion from 6. I get level um, 6 here. I potion as well for more AD. And then I get the flash, ignite, and we kill like that. Perfect kill. Perfect kill. And from that alone, we take the plating, we get the full wave, Shen wastes flash. And he's also level 5 too, so he doesn't even get level 6. So he can't just TP on the map and use his, um, his ult, which is basically his main thing he's going to do. And this is where I also told you guys that you need to ping a lot about this. So as soon as he gets 6, you need to ping instantly where he, um, he is and that he has ultimate. So your team sees it. Because people are in solo queue, they don't see this stuff. And it only takes a split second of looking at the chat to know the information. And people read that, right? They do read it. I know I do. I'm sure a lot of you guys do. And it's that's just how it is psychologically for at least a lot of higher elo players. Obviously low elo. Some people do miss the mark. But still, it's like, if you're not trying to do that, you'll never know how the game's going to really go, right? So yeah, definitely always ping channeled. Even here, if I was more on form and I was more focused on just the gameplay... I would spam ping already that Shen 6. I'm already taking my time. Obviously, look. Look at all the seconds I'm wasting in lane here. Not doing anything. Like, now I ping it. I'm already pinging it, like, 20 seconds after he's already 6. And now he goes away here, and he could just TP. And when Shen tries to TP, by the way, you always want to get the shove. Always get the shove on Shen, because he has, he's in a position where he either ults, misses a whole wave... Or he stays and then he, you know, your teammates pick up a kill and he's not there to give the shield or even apply himself to the fight. So it's a really big thing to acknowledge too, obviously, in this matchup. Okay, so I'm going to just keep looking for the... What am I doing here? I'm trying to remember. So I'm trying to get the wave to sit on my side. There's no action on the map right now. So if I get that freeze, it also does bait Shen into looking for a TP because, again, the way you want to punish a freezing laner is by being proactive. And if you're proactive, that forces your lane and then to push and break the freeze, which then creates you, you know, a it basically breaks the 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 lane blockage, right? Like imagine it as like some kind of like, I don't know, some road and it's blocked. Like nothing can get past, right? But once like that's freed, it's like 
it's both like um moving together and that's where like you get that xp and gold back onto your side of the map but again in shen's case it's a bit more different because he has to tp and always sacrifice which is like the big problem in it well, so let's go back here a little bit i'm not going to vote you much more i'm just trying to explore some of these concepts and mistakes that i made more so yeah, Shen had no W initially here before I took this fight, and then he E's, and I go in, I E W, also, and then E out. I'm not queuing because, again, I want the wave on my side. I'm not going to queue here. Shen is chunked now. If he walks up to me, he is going to, you know, get one shot. And because I'm going W max too, my W is coming up more often than um, it would not usually would, which is why I think it's always good into melee matchups as well. Also attack here. Again, I don't W this. I auto attack. It's a really big thing that you guys need to do as well. Into the Shen matchup. And if he does commit for the W into the E, I have ult and I win. Also, having the freeze here now is gigantic because this is going to allow me to fight Shen. So Shen, he thinks he's like stronger than me. He's full health. I'm half health, by the way, which is deceptive because I have a lot more health in my ultimate to come up. I have my Ignite coming up. I have full Fury. So Shen is baited into thinking that I'm weak here, when in reality, I'm actually really, really strong. So I also attack, get the W. Now he has no W. This is where we can try to try to go for fight. Also, ignore the W there. That was that was a misclick. <laughs> like, if you see where my cursor was, actually, look at that. That was actually really odd. Look at this. Like, my cursor is on him the whole time, but somehow me and a minion, what? <laughs> I don't know, this season, hitboxes just seem even worse. Like, I think it's that split second here where I clicked and his hitbox went on the minion too, but still, really weird. Now, because I have no W, and he did just E and W in my face, you would think, oh, you need to wait for your W. That is your main source of damage. But that's not true in tank matchups, because in tank matchups, what matters the most is your ultimate damage and your Q damage. And plus, if you have Ignite, that's a caviar, right? So at this point, I'm going to auto-Q, going to E, ult, auto him down, empowered E again. Could have E'd again, but I kind of waited because I didn't know if he had flash. And it's like, it's kind of like prolonging the fight to wait for a situation to occur. But yeah, let's just go back again. You don't need W. Like, as long as I EQ, I can auto-Q, auto-E. Could have just W odd here, I think. Like, let me check that again. Oh, I don't have W. What am I talking about? <laughs> Never mind. Muscle memory, habit, just thinking. But yeah, either way, we get the kill. Shen's off the map now. And this is just really huge. I push. Now, I do make the mistake of overstaying, but obviously that's my fault. Now, one more scenario that I am going to talk you guys into is what happened over here in a second. I think it was that fight I had that where Shen... Um, he lived on, like, a low margin. I think it's here. Okay. So again, the way I fight Shen, I keep the wave on my side because Shen has to overexpose himself to come into me and he always has to W and E out. And when he does that, I have my two dashes to reach him. So I'm waiting around, just waiting for him to do something. I E, he Ws instantly. I'm walking downwards so I don't get hit by his taunt because look, Shen is not going to taunt downwards, is he? He's going to taunt this way. So if I sidestep that and then Shen can't get a taunt on me and like throw off my, my rhythm... Then I can just completely walk with him. And as he as I do, do walk down, he E's, I E on top of him with my with my dice. Also, dice by the way, lowers 20 armor. So 20 armor is being lowered here on top of the 160 or 80 that I have. So in fast time, dice, auto, WRQ, fast animation cancel combo, and we get flash. Okay, we didn't kill him, but you know, what does that mean? Shen has to recall now. So Shen recalls, he flashes. He can't go, he can't TP on the map because he's low. If he TPs on the map, he's griefing. Because he's ulting into a fight that he's going to lose. Shen instantly TPs top lane. So that's already two summoners off the map. Now let's fast forward, right? Now in that space of like, let's see. So in that space of... 50 seconds, let's just say like 50 seconds, I'm back in the lane now after I shoved in, Shen did TP, so he forced in, I just got the minions, now Shen is like resetting, he's looking to go back to his tower, but because my bot lane is also fighting here, Shen has to react, he's a very reactive champion to the map, 
So he has to insta TP to protect his teammates. And I can take playing. I can do whatever I want here now. And Shen gets nothing. Now look at this closely. Shen can't E flash. Now if I never took that fight, Shen would E flash here onto, onto both of them. He could E in between here and hit both of them potentially. And then obviously they get the kill and they snowball playings like... And then they also get dragon too. So it's a really, really horrible situation um, to be put in. But the good thing is, and the butterfly effect of it, is that because I thought that, Shen can't do that. And he also can't TP top line to get the wave. So there's so much he's missing. And now I even get a fight here. Like, this is just perfect. All this is just perfect, like, game sense. And, you know, I come here, I get grubs. Shen is off the map. He's unable to do anything. He has to recall now. Missing minions. Didn't do anything whatsoever. Now I'm here, Fly walks in, WRQ, Ignite, and I kill him there. Now I walk down Mundo, Mundo just about lives, but we get playings, I go Dragon. Like, this this macro is just amazing. Young gets Wave. This is, like, the best macro you could want here. Like, it's it's truly amazing to, to watch this, you know? But yeah, guys, um, that is basically the Shen matchup. So I thought I'd do a little VOD review, too, because the game was pretty fast. But I think there's a lot to learn from too, like just to explain it from the way I see the matchup too. So hopefully you guys also enjoy this little VOD review and also like going over my mistakes and also some of these other little things. I'm trying to be as educational as possible and obviously with these videos too. Um, they might not be the highest ELO right now as I'm recording these because I'm trying to improve my commentating skills and get comfortable with YouTube. But still, I think... Um, I'm trying to put more effort in, obviously, just for you guys that want to see and explore my mindset on things. With that said, though, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps the algorithm. And again, I want to thank you guys for all the support, too. And hitting 8,000 subs, like, you guys are killing it. And who knows, maybe we can hit 10,000 by the end of this year if I keep things up. So I'll try really hard for that. But again, guys, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time. So peace out, and have a good one.